Next, let's take a look at what's inside the durable case. First, you'll probably see the familiar return shipping label that you receive from Rayco Rents, making the return of the devices easier. We'll set that on the side for now. Next, you get the uh, checklist, which will show all the items in the box, which we're gonna go over right now. Next, you have a hard copy of the quick start guide from the device, and that's also on the thumb drive included within the box. Let's take a peek now at the hardware itself. The first thing that you notice right away is there's two batteries included with the rental. In addition to that, of course, you have the AC power charger. Uh, the nice thing about this is that in doing my post rental follow-up calls, I found that these batteries really do a good job. They last uh, six to eight hours, I'm told, in the field. But we do give you a second one because we know that the show always has to keep going. As far as placing the battery in, in the charger, it's easy, it's slotted to go in one way. Uh, even I can figure that out. So there you go. You put that in there and then you have the power cord uh, which you plug into the charger. Uh, while I'm thinking of it on the batteries, uh, we're gonna go later on. Tony's gonna show you how to calibrate the device. There's two steps if you're doing HUD lead-based paint. A nice feature is that when you're in the middle of a survey, if you do at the end of the day discover that you're gonna have to use another battery, you don't have to turn the instrument off and recalibrate. You can do what's a hot swap. As long as you do this within, let's say, 20 to 30 seconds, which is quite easy, uh, you can just keep rolling. The next thing that you'll find is the XRS itself. Um, we've got, we'll put that on the table. And then there's a couple other things that, accessories that are very important. Uh, let's go over those right now. You have the micro USB cable, uh, which will enable you to download the data off of the device. You can use Profile Builder, which is a software, or you can just, uh, basically you'd be using the XRF as a jump drive and you get uh, an Excel rows and columns spreadsheet quite easily if your IT department is a little hesitant for you to download the uh, typical software on your network. So you have that, which makes things easier. Um, in here, we also have um, a screwdriver if it's needed for the, for the front lens. Uh, typically that's not needed for the Capcom windows, uh, which are also included. Typically those wouldn't have to be replaced. In addition to that, you have step one, the um, 316 stainless steel uh, clip, which affixes on the front nozzle of the instrument. Tony will show you a little bit about that. And then uh, part two of the recalibration would be the PCS calibration block, which is used for those of you which are testing uh, lead-based paint. Um, so you can cross the HUD box. Uh, so, so that's what's in the, uh, in the case itself. And next we're gonna talk with Tony about how one would Recal uh, not recalibrate, but rather calibrate the device. Hey, my name is Tony from Rayco Runs. I'm a technician here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to calibrate the XRF today. Uh, first basic step here, we're going to put the battery inside the unit, turn it on. It's going to warm up. It might take a little time. Um, but the first step to calibrating the XRF is to do a uh, clip cal check. This is pretty much going to test the, the energy of the unit. As recommended by SIAPS, the manufacturer, calibrations should always be done in the environment that you're going to be doing your testing in. To get to your calibration screen, you're going to go through the admin user. Password for that is 12345. You'll get this warning message as you go into the menus. You'll want to go into analyze, lead paint. And every four hours, it's recommended that you should be recalibrating this unit, uh, no matter how many samples you've been taking. 
So as soon as you go into Analyze and you select the Lead Paint application, you'll have the clip attached to the very end of the lens. You'll do a 15 second calibration. Important to note the warning message on the top of the screen. After the clip calibration, you will move into the PCS calibration that's required by NIST. Depending on the unit's configuration, you might be asked three times. Other times, it might be just a single uh, PCS cal. Uh, it's important to note the, the number you get for PB. Anything between 0 0.8 and 1.2 uh, will pass. Anything outside that range is going to fail. After you complete the three 1.0 checks, you'll get a 0, 0.0 sample. And as quick as that, you will be ready to begin sampling.